Politics Show with Matthew Revell. Hello, welcome to the Wolverhampton Politics Show here on 101.8 WCRFM. On the line, we've got David Hickson from the Say No to 0870.com community on the web, on the internet. Hello, David. Hi. Welcome to the show. This is a subject that's filled with numbers, strange business practices, and all sorts of things. So try and help us get to the meat of the matter. The issue that we're talking about is there's some GP surgeries amongst many businesses and government departments are actually making a profit when we ring them, or, or let's say making some revenue rather than a profit. Then we separate two issues. There is a lot of confusion about how much it costs to make certain telephone calls to particular numbers beginning 08. We can spend weeks talking about that. The thing I want particularly to talk about is what you say is where people are making money out of these calls. Some of these numbers, particularly those beginning 0844, are structured in such a way that people who call them pay extra, perhaps a little, perhaps a lot, to call these numbers because some of the revenue, either the money they pay to make the call, is shared by the telephone company with the person who rents the line. This is used with permanent rate calls, of course, for people to make lots of money, but it's also used on 0844 numbers and some others for people to help towards their costs. With GPs providing services through the National Health Service, their costs must all be covered by NHS funds derived from taxation, not from money paid by patients who are simply accessing their service. Um, so, what, 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 can be, what can be done then? Um, each GP surgery is, is more or less autonomous. They are autonomous. They are, however, under a contract to the National Health Service, which is arranged through the local primary care trust. This contract includes a clause that says, well, it, it firstly stops them using premium rate telephone numbers, the very, very expensive ones. So that's covered. But these slightly lower cost things are not. However, there is a clause in the contract that says that the contractor or either GP, an independent operator, cannot receive fees or remuneration from patients in any way, including indirectly, which of course would be what's happening here, and it applies whether it's to profit the GP, or to pay for expensive holidays, or indeed if it's only to pay for services that are delivered to patients. The NHS is not funded by money taken from patients. It's funded centrally, ultimately from taxation. Now, to tell, can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing at, um, as part of the so, Say No to 0870.com? There are a number of people who contribute on the Say No to 0870 website who are concerned about all sorts of issues around this. As I say, there are many other issues as well. There, I think simply people exchange ideas. This is how I got to know about it um, earlier this year. Um, and I saw postings there that were actually bringing this to attention. I've contributed myself. I've also now contributed in circulating the information around many, many people, including members of Parliament, the government, and, of course, the primary care trust themselves, many of whom themselves don't quite realise what's going on. So very much it's a matter of bringing this issue to people's attention. We're very happy from a political perspective. This has now been picked up. This topic is very commonly mentioned in Parliament on a day-to-day -day basis, affecting not just the GPs but, of course, other public services. And even one of the MPs who's been very keen on this subject for a while now has actually secured an adjournment debate which will be taking place in Parliament at about 10 o'clock on Monday evening. So there will be half an hour when this one member and maybe others supporting him will be making this point very strongly. He's put out a very passionate news release today about it. And then we will hear a government minister respond. It will be interesting to know if they're now ready to start taking action. They've been hinting at it for some months. I think they're probably now ready to move. I, I understand that Rob Maris, uh, Wolverhampton South West MP, is also involved in, in, in this campaign. Rob, Rob has been very strong on this one in relation not just to GPs but to other NHS providers and indeed public services generally. He's got a large number of questions for written answer down at the moment going all around the government. Rob's particular success was actually back at the end of November last year when he intervened on Alan Johnson in a debate in the House to ask him about this subject and secured a great success because Alan Johnson in reply confirmed that GPs who engage in revenue sharing are breaching the terms of their contract 
a point we've been, all been trying to make for some time, and here it was coming from the, mouth of the, from the mouth of the Secretary of State. And we're hoping to have Rob Marisol in a couple of months' time um, to talk well, about hope, um, Hopefully Rob will be there to take credit when, uh, when something actually really happens. We've heard the words, we wait for the action now. Okay. Um, so there are examples of uh, GP surgeries in Wolverhampton who are, who are using these numbers? Within Wolverhampton, I've done a bit of a um, bit of a quick look. Obviously, I'm looking at this from all over the country. Um, quite a large number of GPs in the Wolverhampton area have 0845 numbers, which is a slightly different thing. I'm not sure that on these 0845 numbers they're actually making a profit. There are some 0844s as well. But on the 0845s, I'm not sure they're making a profit. They are, however, making a very bad mistake in judgment. Whatever benefits may be offered to people on 0845, it still costs them an awful lot more. On a mobile, it costs an awful lot of money to call an 0845 number. Whether that extra cost is truly justified by the benefits that are offered, we don't know. What has happened in the last year is that a new range of telephone numbers have become available that would be far more suitable for this sort of situation. If they don't want the revenue share, if they don't want the profits, and in the case of the GPs, that's illegal anyway. If they don't want the profits and they need a number that isn't a local number, whatever reason they may have for that, they can now use numbers beginning 03. There are two features of 03 numbers which are enforced by regulation, and as far as we can see, all the telephone companies are applying this properly. The first is, if you call an 03 number, you cannot be charged any more than if you called an 01 or 02 number. So if you have an inclusive package, it must be part of that. The other thing is that with an 03 number, the revenue sharing arrangement, which is quite nasty, is not allowed. So, any public body that's looking to provide a service, for one reason or another doesn't want or can't use a local number, should now be using 03. Those who are not should be changing over to 03 pronto. David, just briefly before we wrap up, um, what other sorts of numbers are out there and what, what, what should people be looking out for where they could get nasty bill at the end of the month? Right. It is not easy. Any number that begins 08 is, should be treated with some small suspicion. I'm not going to give you easy advice. I'll tell you, if you look at the BT price list at 0844 numbers, there are 35 different charging categories for 0844 numbers. So this is not something that every, anybody can seriously hope to get properly on top of. If you have a mobile phone, totally distrust any promises that anybody makes you about what it may co cost to call. The mobile operators do all sorts of bizarre and weird things. Of course, 0800 numbers, which are commonly advertised as free, you have to pay for if you're calling on a mobile, in most cases. Okay, so, so just be careful is my advice. If something begins 03, that's as good as 01 or 02. Trust that. But apart from that, all I can say, and I hate to have to make it so vague, is simply take care, folks. Where, where, where can people find out more on the internet? Where can they find Save No 0870? Um, the URL is just what you said and then dot .com. Where that website is very, very useful is that it is a purely sort of voluntary thing whereby people who discover alternatives to the higher price numbers post them onto that website, thereby making them available for other people to use. That's the main function of the website. So if you're perhaps calling your insurance company, as I was last week, and they've given you an 0870 number to use, there might well be um, an ordinary geographic number that you can call instead. That's what the same to 0870 website is great for. We also have a series, there's also there, I say we don't, I'm, I'm not part of the, those who run it. There is also a discussion forum where various people, some of them highly opinionated, um, express their views and share ideas and thoughts. Those who are interested in the sort of blogging side of things can um, explore their way around there as well. Wonderful. Thanks very much for joining us on the Wolverhampton Politics I'm Show. I'm delighted. All the best to you. Cheers. The Politics Show with Matthew Ravel. W -W 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 -W